Um, Biobean is involved in the coffee industry, but we haven't got the newest kind of uh, cold brew coffee or whizzy frappuccino. We're actually very interested in the waste that that industry produces. So Biobean takes waste coffee grounds from all across the UK and turns it into a range of advanced biofuel products. We work with waste management companies and coffee companies who produce the waste coffee grounds, ranging from small independent cafes here in London up to the biggest retail um, chains in the UK, um, and also even the instant coffee manufacturers where all of the waste coffee grounds are produced there as well. So all from very small independents all the way up to some of the biggest coffee companies in the world to make sure that we access all of these thousands of tons of waste coffee grounds. Because whilst you guys have all drunk in some coffee today, you're not alone. And um, in the UK alone, we produce about 500,000 tonnes of waste coffee grounds each year. And all of this waste not only produces a lot of um, waste in terms of actual you know, emissions, in terms of CO2 emissions, which is about 3.8 million tonnes, it also costs the industry quite a lot of money, about 80 million pounds a year. And so what we're able to do by collecting all of this waste coffee grounds is not only save in terms of CO2 emissions, but also save the company's money. We then have built um, what is you know, the, the world's first coffee waste recycling factory just outside London, where we're able to process roughly one in 10 cups of coffee drunk in the UK, about 50,000 tons a year. And we take all of this waste, take the oils out, and then we turn the leftover, leftovers from that into the excitingly named coffee logs, which you can see um, demonstrated over there. And essentially they are what they say in the tin, logs made from waste coffee grounds um, and used primarily in log burning stoves um, and in open fires to displace wood and coal. And coffee is a fantastic feedstock for this because historically with, you know, within the sustainability industry people have relied on it solely being a, a green solution. But our premise at Biobean is that you don't have to make a compromise in terms of cost or quality to, make, to be able to buy a green product. And so coffee as a feedstock is energy dense. And also we're able to sell our coffee logs for a fraction of the price of both wood and coal. So making sure that we're making the, the green choice, the logical choice in that as well. In terms of our plans going forward, in terms of scaling, we currently just operate here in the UK, but we're looking to scale uh, Biobean both nationally and eventually we'll start loading factories outside of the UK as well because coffee is not just drunk here, it's also a, a global drink and so making sure that not a single cup is wasted through that and that we can see waste as a resource as opposed to just that instead of waste. Thank you very much. And we are an aquaponic vertical farm which means we have fish and we take the fish waste, essentially the fish poo, and we take the nutrients from that and feed plants. And the plants we're growing are salad leaves and micro herbs. And we're doing this indoors, so it's in on racks, and it's 10 benches high. And we're sowing seeds onto a recycled carpet that's grown under LED lights. It's a controlled environment, and that means we can control the lighting and the water flow and the temperature. So it means that we can produce these salads all year round at the same quality and deliver them all throughout London in our little electric van that does the drop offs. But what we're currently doing, we have the 12 fish tanks and they contain tilapia, which if you're looking for protein for a city, they're a really great source of protein because it takes 1.2 kilos of food to get a fish to grow to one kilo in size. The size of the farm only means we can produce around 4,800 a year. So if you're looking to a city, that's probably not enough. And as salad leaves, we can create around 200,000 bags of salad a year. Which again, that sounds quite a lot, but if you break it down on a weekly basis, that's actually only 3,800 bags of salad a week. So we need to upscale if we're going to make a contribution to London being carbon neutral. And every, there's empty warehouses all throughout London, and not just London, everywhere. Um, the one we currently occupy stood empty for two years. So if we move into bigger warehouses, it means we're not having to create new builds. We don't need to take land away that's already green or is earmarked for housing development. But what we could also look to do is put a farm next to a heat source, like a manufacturing plant, you know, a production place, but creating heat that would tend to just be released into the atmosphere. We could actually siphon that heat off to then use to keep the plants at the right temperature. 
But then also we need to look further. We grow under LED lights, so that's a lot of electricity. And at the moment, we're on a renewable energy tariff, but rules regarding our tenancy means that we can't make any exterior changes to the building, so we can't put any solar panels up. But if you were to move to a warehouse that actually that wasn't a problem, we could then put solar panels up and it probably wouldn't create enough energy to power all the LED lights in the farm, but it could go some way to contributing towards that. But then we probably need to then look at the very start. So we currently feed the fish, fish meal, because that's what legislation allowed. One minute to go. Um, <laughs> But that's recently been, that's been relaxed slightly, so you can now incorporate insects into the food chain of farmed animals. Insects being a great thing because we could then close that circuit even more from what we're already doing in the closed circuit environment. The insects predominantly feed on food waste. When we harvest our crops, we have all those roots free that actually just go into compost and things. But we could then use those to create insects to then feed the fish. What we need to do ultimately is look at doing, creating like a holistic integrated approach to scaling the business and using businesses who are happy to give us their heating, who are happy to maybe let us use a bit of their roof space for solar panels. And yeah, hopefully we can scale it. Do you name a world city? Probably London will always be in the top three. Climate change is a global problem. We're going to need global leadership to fix it. This city, I think, is in a great position to do it for all the reasons Kelsey said. It's got all the innovators from all over the world here working together. It's kind of an incubator. It's globally connected culturally. It's got a communications reach, which is literally global. So if we do it here, we'll have a massive impact. And one of the things I often hear is, oh, well, what's the point of us doing it in like this county or this country or this city? Well, actually, in London, not only is it right to do it for its own purposes of cutting carbon, but it will have global ramifications, and they will be really good for London, for jobs, for exports, for innovation, for finance, and everything else. Kelsey. Um, I, I will build on that, but if you take one thing away from it, I hope, I hope it's about innovation and experimentation. And that is something that we can all take back to our everyday lives. Um, you know, some things go right, some things go wrong, and there's, there's just different things, different ways we can experiment. If you have a chance, read the book Mindset. It's the best book I've ever read, but it's actually about just constantly using experimentation um, in, in everything that you do. And I think that, that that mentality of experimentation with leveraging all the um, benefits that London has to offer, uh, it, it actually is a, is a positive future. So I'm going to take away the, you know, going forward to keep looking at closing circuits, whether that be on food with the fish and salads, or whether it's coffee and wind, just keep looking at closing the circuit. And also to keep looking at ways of integrating businesses together and how everyone can work alongside each other to create a carbon neutral city. Um, I come from the sector that you know, c cities are primarily responsible for the vast majority of um, global CO2 emissions and therefore climate change. Um, it's therefore going to fall to, to cities to solve them and yet you need the mega cities like London to, to solve that. Um, from my sector, the two kind of ways in which, or the two easiest ways in which we can begin to um, make London a carbon neutral city are plant loads and loads of trees, which are an amazing technology and are probably the, you know, whilst we can have lots of new technologies, trees are really, really good at what they do in terms of preventing um, climate change. And then secondly, it's around understanding uh, waste and, what, and, and really focusing on that and, and waste in terms of whether it's wasted space, wasted um, wind energy or, or wasted organic resources like coffee, just focus down on that because the opportunity is vast and that's where I think a lot of the, the businesses, the big businesses of the future will come from. Well, so we've been motivated to look at these low carbon solutions to really enable these technologies to be available to people. But what I really think is that we are all part of the system and that, you know, we've looked at these massive um, opportunities with lots of massive entities. But if you just live in your day-to-day -day life and you walk from your kitchen to your bathroom to your bedroom, you are creating your own climate in which you can contribute to this. So I think that we have to look at our own lifestyles and it goes back to the very simple reduce, reuse, recycle. You don't have to start a company, you can do it every day yourself.
Well, I don't know about you uh, guys and girls in the audience, but this has been fantastic. I, for one, have never shared a debate uh, on stage while carbon neutral electric vehicles are racing around the outside and people are cheering, uh, generating electricity kinetically while kicking footballs into holes. It, it's, it's fantastic, it's diverse, it's innovative, it's wonderful. You've been an absolutely brilliant audience. Give yourselves there's a big round of applause. Claire, Mark, Gary, Donna, Slinky, Elvin, and Richard Ayoade.